What documents and evidence do you need to submit to support your marriage green card case? I am immigration attorney Keilani Hux Franca, and we're here today to talk through exactly that. So that if you are thinking about um, submitting a marriage green card case, you have an idea of what that looks like. What does it entail? What kind of evidence and proof are you going to be expected to be able to provide to the U.S. government to support that marriage green card case? Um, it's a lot. Um, what I want you to remember as we're talking through this are, one, this is a complex process and it involves a lot of documentation. Two, there are a lot of different ways to get to the same end point. Um, we can always be creative and find other ways to prove um, evidence of a certain thing we need to prove. There's no one particular document we ever have to have, um, except in very certain circumstances like your marriage license, but even that we can get creative with. So I want you to know that this is a complex process. Um, there are a lot of ways to get to the end and to have done a good job and to get you the result you want. We don't have to look identical in every case. Um, and the last thing I want you to think about is that um, this matters. So the U.S. government has an entire department of the immigration system devoted to figuring out if your marriage is real. Um, it's the marriage fraud department and they look closely at marriage-based green card cases. So I want you to feel really prepared with the evidence you need to avoid ever uh, coming into contact with the marriage fraud department. I, my goal for you is that you will know the evidence that's needed. You'll be able to find that evidence and give it to your attorney. I feel strongly that you need to work with a trusted attorney on your marriage green card case. Do not try and do this on your own. It's really complex and it's really easy to mess up and have no idea you messed it up. And then to be in a world of hurt later where you've wasted time and money and you've maybe put yourself in a position that's hard to get out of. And um, so I would really encourage you to find a trusted attorney to work with on your marriage green card case. Give that person all the documents and evidence they need up front um, so that you're not in a position later of having to defend your marriage because it's clear from the beginning that your marriage is legitimate um, and that you are eligible for a green card based on that marriage. So with that in mind, um, we're gonna keep those three things in mind. This is complex, but there are a lot of ways to get to the end and it matters that you need to do it right so that you don't get flagged as somebody who might be in a fraudulent marriage for your green card. Okay, with that in mind, let's talk about how we, um, how we, okay. Just making sure that there weren't any comments up there. I saw a comment come through, but we don't need to talk about that one right now. Um, let's talk about what documents you need to support your marriage green card case. So I want you to think about three different kinds of documents that are gonna be needed to support your marriage green card case. The first is proof of your identity. We have to prove that the two people in the marriage are the two people that we're talking about. And um, next we have to prove you are married to each other and that your marriage is legitimate. And what that means is that the reason that you got married was not for a green card. Now, it is fine if you were excited about getting your green card and that is a really awesome benefit of your marriage. That's completely fine. It just can't be the only reason you're married. You have to have actually gotten married for some reason other than an immigration benefit and that's what we need to prove. Um, so we first prove who each of you are. We prove your marriage is legitimate and that you're married to each other. And lastly, we have to prove that the immigrant, the person seeking the green card, is eligible for a green card. Um, and each of those steps requires documentation. So I'm gonna talk through with you today the documents I use with my clients to prove their marriage green card cases, excuse me, to prove their marriage green card cases so that you have an idea if this is the kind of case that you're gonna move forward with, um, what all is involved so you're ready to go when you start your case. So first, um, regardless of if you're living inside the United States or outside the United States, um, your case will start with filing a whole bunch of forms. Um, depending on where you are and the particular nuances of your case, the number of forms, the kind of forms, um, and where you file and how you file is gonna be different. So each case is unique, but you're gonna start with a ton of government forms. Um, and many of those forms have fees with them. So you'll need to file the form with the appropriate fee. Um, and you'll need to send pictures of yourself to prove who you are. That's the real easy part. Um, next, we have to prove your identity. We do that for the person who is the U.S. citizen or resident by sending in um, any number of things. So we have to prove that the person who is seeking the green card for their spouse is really a citizen or resident because only citizens and residents can ask for green cards for their spouses. So we prove the citizenship or residency of the spouse with immigration status 
through a birth certificate, a passport, or a green card. Excellent. Then we have to prove the identity of the immigrant. And we can do that with a birth certificate, with a passport, with current immigration documents. There are a lot of ways to prove who you are. Um, next, we have to prove you're married to each other. Usually, we do that through a marriage certificate. Um, sometimes we can prove that you are married at common law and you don't have a marriage certificate. That's a much more complex case. But for most of my clients, um, we just produce the marriage certificate and shows you were married to each other um, and where you were married. And as long as your marriage is lawful in the place where you got married, um, you're good. So next, we have to prove that your marriage is real. Now, here's where most of the documentation and evidence comes in for your marriage-based green card case. We have to prove you are really married to each other for a reason other than a green card. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how I set up these files for my clients so you have an idea of what a successful application looks like. Um, the first thing I do is provide a picture through document form. I tell a story in documents of the history of the relationship, starting with the courtship, going to the marriage, the honeymoon, the life together now. So that might look like um, love notes from when you were dating each other, um, saved text messages when you first started dating, um, any travel itineraries from trips you took together, evidence of the proposal. So do we have a receipt for the ring? Do we have, um, you know, notes back and forth? For example, on a recent client, um, a family member had helped him prepare for the proposal. That was so cute. Um, and we had those notes um, back and forth preparing for the proposal that we could use to show the marriage is real. Um, and then invitation to the wedding and um, plans for the wedding itinerary about where you're gonna, where you had dinner, or the, the hall that you rented or all that kind of stuff. Now with COVID, we have some different restrictions. So we're having different kinds of evidence that we can use, but whatever happened in your real life that you did to prepare for your marriage, we want that. We want to show that information. And um, whether it was virtual or in person, we want to show you celebrating with your friends and family um, and prove that part of your relationship. Um, and then letters of congratulations or something that are really nice. If you got gifts for your wedding, if you got um, sweet notes from your family and friends saying how excited they are for you, I'll um, make my clients take pictures of that stuff and send it to me because it's really lovely and really paints a picture of the relationship. Um, and then next, after I've sort of shown the history of the relationship for my clients, I like to talk about um, evidence of a joint life now. So after you're married, um, many people will join their lives together. And if that has happened for you guys, that is something I really want to show. Um, and so joint finances, any shared responsibilities um, for children, for pets, for anything you do in your life together that is a shared responsibility, um, we'll present those documents next. And so that might look like um, mortgage or lease documents, wherever you live that has both of your names on it. It could look like renter's insurance, um, health insurance policies. If one are, if you're on the same policy on somebody's work, we want we want that to show that you share insurance. Um, emergency contact. This is a good one that people don't think about. Um, often you'll change your emergency contact at work to be your husband or your wife's name instead of your parent or your friend. Um, showing that that person is your emergency contact is a really great evidence that like they're actually part of your life. They're not your fake spouse. They're your real spouse. Um, so that second group of documents that we use are evidence of shared responsibility, shared finances. So we've told the story of your relationship, sort of the love story itself. Then we'll show your shared financial and shared responsibility um, concerns together. Uh, the next thing I like to do is include letters of support written from family and friends specifically for this purpose. So you may have other letters we'll include that people sent you um, when you were dating or when you got engaged or, or for your wedding, that kind of stuff. But I like to also include letters of support from family and friends who know you really well and can speak to your relationship and just talk about that for immigration purposes and say, you know, I met uh, Amy and Geraldo. Uh, I've known Amy forever. Geraldo has been with her for 10 years. Um, this is how I've seen their relationship grow. It's really beautiful. I'm really excited to support them as they move forward, whatever. Whatever they can say truthfully, we like to include that stuff. And I really like that because it presents a... A, a current picture of the support that surrounds your relationship, which is a really nice way to prove that it's real. Um, next, I'd like to include photographs. Um, immigration will actually let you submit photographs, like four by six, glossy, or three by five, whatever, whatever size you want to submit. Um, actual photographs. You don't need to like scan pictures of them. You can submit the actual photographs. Um, and so I like that. I have my clients send me just album, Google albums full of photographs. And then I pick the ones I like 
um, and print those out and send them with the application. It's a really nice way to, again, tell your love story in a visual way that may be a little more striking than just writing or documents. Um, so photos of your life together are really nice. I'd like to send in um, photos to kind of match the love story we told. So photos of the beginning of their relationship, some photos of the engagement, wedding photos. Um, and then it's really powerful if we can send in some photographs with the couple with the other person's family, right? So when you're in a fake relationship, you don't like spend Christmas with your fake husband's family. <laughs> That's not a thing that happens. So um, I really like to be able to send in photos of you guys celebrating important life events together with the other person's family, with your friends out in public. Fake relationships aren't very publicized, right? Like you, if you if you have a fake husband, a fake spouse who's just helping you get a green card, you guys are probably not doing a lot of stuff together in real life. Um, so I'd like to send that stuff in. And the last bucket of information I like to pay attention to um, are really boring things. So if you are somebody who is in a fake marriage and the government's trying to find your fake marriage and you're trying to trick them, you're not going to be doing boring life stuff together. You're not going to be unloading moving trucks. You're not going to be testing each other about making sure you pick up tuna at the grocery store because you're out. Um, that is stuff that happens in real life and not in fake life. So I like to find some very mundane day-to-day -day things that we can include with the application that just kind of tell the story of what we do all day long. Um, if one of the one of the people in the relationship always picks up the kids, but somebody else had to pick up the kids that day, like you just text, text about, oh, I'm stuck at work. Can you pick up the kids? Like, send me that text message and I'll include that in your case. I love it. Um, because it just tells the story of a normal everyday couple. And that's what we're trying to do here. We don't need to prove that your love is extraordinary. We don't need to prove that your love is infallible. We just need to prove it's legitimate. Um, and that is a low bar, but it's also real. You, can't, you have to take it seriously. You can't assume. The assumption is not that your marriage is real. The assumption is that you have to prove your marriage is real. And so that's what we do through these different um, different mechanisms. We tell your story in documents. We tell your story in pictures. We tell your story in text messages. Um, and all of these ways, through all of these different kinds of documents, we we tell your story. We tell your love story. And I love doing these cases. It's really fun because um, I just get to tell my client's love story and get to be creative about how I do that um, to match the immigration requirements. And um, it's really fun. So keep in mind, there is no wrong way to tell your story. Um, there is no required way to tell your story. It's just for you, right? So when I do a case with my clients, I sit down with them and I learn about them and I learn about their life and I hear about their life together. And then we brainstorm about what documents we can show um, that will tell the story of that life. So you're not required to have any certain kind of relationship. You're just required to, sh to prove the relationship that you already have. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, so that is the most important set of documents in your case. It's going to be proving your marriage is legitimate. So we've proved um, who you are. We've proved you're married to each other. And we've proved that your relationship is legitimate by telling the story of your relationship through documents and pictures. Next, we're going to have to prove your financial well-being. This is a really big requirement, and I'm not going to get into every aspect of it right now, but it's important to know that the public charge rule is an important part of a green card marriage case. That means that you're going to need to prove that the person who is the U.S. citizen or resident is financially stable and able to support the immigrant if they need financial support. Right now, there is an additional requirement that may be going away soon, but right now it's still in place that requires the immigrant themselves to submit their own forms and their own financial documents to prove their own financial well-being and their ability to take care of themselves. So um, that's the last big bucket of documents that you need to be able to produce for your marriage green card case. It's a lot of stuff. We're not going to go through every document right here, but I'm going to give you the highlights. So we want the the person who is the petitioner, that's the U.S. citizen or resident, they're going to need to prove their income. So that can come through W-2s, that can come through tax returns, um, bank statements, retirement statements, proof of assets, if they own multiple cars, if they own multiple homes, whatever their financial st statement is, we'll want the financial documents to prove it. On the immigrants side, the person who's seeking the green card right now um, is required to do what's called a form I-944. 
the Biden administration has asked that the Immigration Service review the need for that form. It may or may not continue to be required. Right now, it still is. And it's pretty burdensome. It asks for an enormous amount of financial and personal information about not just the immigrant, but about everyone living in their household. It, if I can editorialize for a minute, it's ridiculous. Um, it is far beyond what is needed to actually prove that an immigrant can support themselves financially if needed. So some of the documents that are needed for that are educational history, personal financial status. So the immigrant will need to produce a lot of bank statements um, their current bank statements, any loan statements that they have, any credit card statements that are outstanding, um, historical credit card information, health insurance policies, um, college transcripts. It's a lot of information. So um, something to keep in mind. This is something you do not want to try and do on your own. It's really easy to mess up. Um, there's so many documents that are required for this part of the application. But it's doable. Um, we just have to guide you through and make sure that we're finding each and every document that is requested and we're not leaving anything out. So um, that is the last set of documents that you're gonna need to really think about for your case. Um, and the, the things we've gone over so far are true for every single green card case. Um, the way in which you will file them, where you'll file them, the timeline for filing each document will be different in each case depending on you and your circumstances and the case strategy that you design with your attorney. Um, but those documents are needed in every case. Now, depending on you and your unique circumstance, there may be additional documents unique to your case that we'll need to add that we don't add for other cases. And that will be true if, for example, you have ever had contact with law enforcement, ever been arrested, ever gone to jail, ever been charged with any crime, even if it was totally dismissed, we're gonna need to look at all of those documents um, and make a really fact-based determination about what we include. Um, it is super important that you have an attorney if you've ever had contact with law enforcement because um, that contact can really impact your case and you don't want to submit any documentations that aren't absolutely required, but if you leave anything out, you can get in trouble. So you need an attorney to evaluate your criminal history. Um, and so for my clients, I do that and we decide, okay, what is absolutely required to be submitted and what can we hold back and just explain in writing. Um, and so your case may involve um, disclosing some criminal history documents if that's part of your personal history. Um, other things that you may be required to send in, other documents may include medical records. Say something has come up in your case where you are not eligible for a green card unless you ask for a waiver. Um, to ask for that waiver, you're gonna have to, to um, include other documents and that may um, it, that'll be a number of things depending on the waiver um, and how you are eligible and the proof that you're going to submit to prove your eligibility, but it often includes medical records of family members to prove that they are ill. That can be a way to overcome certain inel ineligibility and get your waiver as proving the, um, the harm that would come to your family members um, if you weren't able to continue to care for them and that kind of stuff. So medical documents um, could be another thing that's added to your specific case that's not added to others. Um, but that's it. So it seems, it seems like a lot and it is a lot. I don't want you to misunderstand. It is an enormous amount of documentation, um, but it's doable. This is doable. I don't want you to feel daunted by this task. I don't want you to feel like it's overwhelming or that you're going to mess it up. Um, I will encourage you to find an attorney you trust and do your marriage green card case with an attorney you trust, because I frequently have consultations with people who have either try to do them case, do their case themselves and they're stuck or they got a denial and now they need help. Um, and that is a, it's a, a riskier situation. It's harder and it's more expensive at that point to hire the attorney because you've already messed something up and then the attorney has to not just do the case, but undo the, the problems. Um, so I would really encourage you. I know that um, attorneys are not cheap and it is not within everybody's finances, but if there's a way for you to make it work, find an attorney who you trust um, to do your case for you well from the beginning because it will be better for you in the long run to not have any problems with immigration and to quickly be able to get your work permit um, and to set yourself up for success in the United States. So this stuff is doable. Um, there are a lot of documents, but we really enjoy guarding, guiding our clients through the process and helping them decide which kinds of documents might be best to tell their story to really show the immigration 
officer who's looking at your case, um, the full picture of your relationship and the full picture of your marriage so that there's no doubt through the documents and the evidence that you send in that your marriage is legitimate, you are eligible for a green card um, and that your case should be approved. So that's the ultimate goal. You're always looking to submit documents to be able to support an approval of your case. Um, we would love to help you out. If you would like a consultation, give us a call. 512-675-2945. We do these cases all the time and we would love to evaluate your case um, and see if we can help you out. Um, but if not us, find somebody else you trust um, and have a consultation with a knowledgeable, experienced immigration attorney. Que no vayan con notarios, okay? Do not go to a notario. Um, notarios are not licensed to practice law and they can screw up your life real bad. Um, I see a lot of clients who've been screwed over by notarios. It's really, really bad. Um, so please avoid the urge to go to a notario. Um, they have absolutely no authority to practice law. They don't know what they're doing. Even if they are trying to help you out, they really don't know what they're doing. So you should avoid notarios at all costs. So it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today. Um, we'll be back next week as we are every week. Um, and if you are in Texas, like I am, I hope you're doing okay. I hope that everything is going okay for you and your family and you have the um, the things you need to take care of yourself. I know the last week was really hard for a lot of us. Um, my family included, we were without um, water and heat and power for a week. Um, and it was really challenging with our three kiddos. But um, if that's you, I hope that you're doing okay and that you have the resources that you need. And if not, reach out to your government officials um, to see how they can help you because there is help available. Um, all right, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys next week. I'll see you later. Bye.